Well, hey, this is Eric Nielsen with the High Plains Christian Church in Twin Falls, Idaho. And we are here for another installment of Discovery Bible Study on Mark chapter one. Uh, this is gonna be our fourth video. We're only in chapter one. And if you're new to this, Discovery Bible Study is a method of studying the scripture uh, where you read, ask some simple questions and discover uh, what God's word says. Uh, the idea behind Discovery Bible Study is empowering people to study God's word for themselves. Now, there's going to be some links in the show notes uh, for those who want to dig deeper uh, and get into some of the, the more intricate or historical aspects of the text. But we want to increase Bible literacy. We want people to be able to read the scripture, wrestle with what they see on the page, and come to some conclusions about what it means and what they need to do about it. Uh, as they read. So we're going to jump over to the different screen and look at the text together. And we're going to be in Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 35, and then all the way through the end of the chapter. So before we read the text, we always stop and pray. And so let's pray together. Uh, Father, thank you for this beautiful day, at least where I live. And we're thankful, Lord, for uh, your word that guides us, that instructs us, that shapes us uh, into the likeness of Jesus. Would you help us, Lord, to understand uh, what we need to know and what we need to do as we study this? Would your Holy Spirit come alongside of us and help our understanding, give us discernment? And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Mark chapter 1. Uh, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled through the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. And as a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming. To him. Wow. I, I love that. What a great passage of scripture. Okay, so when we do the questions, you might be doing this for personal study. You might be doing an online study with friends. You might be uh, with your family in your living room or even with a, a small group from church. Um, what I would suggest is as we read the questions, I'll read the question and then you hit pause. And you or whoever you're with can answer the questions. And then when you're done, you can unpause and listen to my answer if you like, or skip on to the next question. All right, so question number one, uh, what part of the story did you like? Okay, I'm going to probably pick an answer that no one else did. Uh, verse 38, Jesus says, we must go on to the other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. Uh, sometimes people say that um, Christians are preachy, that pastors are preachy. Uh, don't preach at me. Hey, man, Jesus came. He came to preach, uh, and he preached the good news, and I just want to, I just want to, like, key in on that. The preaching is okay. It's good. Um, in fact, some people that use Discovery Bible Study say uh, there's no need for preaching. We'll just gather in groups and just study the Word this way. There's a lot right about studying the Word this way, but there's still a place among God's people for his word to be preached. And so I think that's the first thing I want to notice. And then the second thing, I mean, what a sweet scene with this man who's got leprosy. Um, I mean, 
lepers were unclean. You were supposed to stay well away from them. And Jesus um, had this leprous man come up before him. He could have been punished, maybe killed for that. I mean, they took leprosy very seriously. He approached Jesus and Jesus didn't uh, shoo him away. Jesus did the unthinkable. He touched the man. He touched the man with the infectious skin disease. He touched the man with leprosy. And he said, I am willing to be healed. Ah, oh, man, uh, just to be there and see that, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, it's, it's emotional just to read that and, and think about what that man's life had been like. And then he met Jesus and like, boom, it, everything changed. Um, all right, let's go uh, on to question two. Is there anything that you found confusing or hard to understand? Um, the thing I think that most people are going to jump in on right away is verse uh, 44. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. So um, in the Old Testament law, there's rules about lepers and people with leprosy and and um and different skin diseases and people when they would have a skin disease they would go get checked out by the priest and he would give them certain instructions about what needed to happen based on their their condition what he discovered about their condition which is kind of an odd thing when you think about a priest um kind of almost in a doctor role um but basically once someone had been healed or found uh, ceremonially clean, um, then they could go and be basically reinstated back into society. And when that happened, they were required to give an offering. And so, I, you know, again, with Discovery Bible Study, we're not reading commentary beforehand. I'm not doing research beforehand. Um, I believe the instructions on this are in Leviticus. And this is one of those things you could study for yourself later uh, using the, the notes uh, attached to the video. Um, but that's probably the most confusing part of this passage is like, what does that mean exactly? Uh, and that's kind of the gist of, of what was going on. All right. So uh, after question one and two, we always reread the text. And uh, I like to read it in a different translation. And so I'm going to drop down to the NIV. Uh, these are the two favorites. I like to read the NLT and the NIV. And we're going to read it again. As, let's see. Here we go. 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. And as a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. All right. Question three. What did I learn about myself or about people in general? Um, man, I have to confess, uh, there's something that happened in 35 through 39 there where Jesus has um, kind of made a splash, you know, crowds are coming around, the disciples are caught up in the, the fanfare, um, and they're like, Jesus, there's this crowd, they're, you know, they're ready to see you, it's like the paparazzi of Jesus, we have to go back and see the people, see all this, these adoring people, adoring crowds. And Jesus said, hey, there's other people that need to hear uh, the message. He said, we need to keep moving. 
and go on to the next villages so they can hear this message too. And I, I think that if I learn something about myself or about people in general is that sometimes we, we become very short-sighted as disciples of Christ, that if things are going well in our church or our Bible study, um, we kind of forget like, hey, there's more to be done. There's more people to be reached. Um, there's other people that need to hear. And sometimes um, we talk about this a lot in our, in our church plant, that sometimes uh, we get so focused on our local church that we, we think that the kingdom growth is like our church getting bigger. Um, but it, as you read the scripture, it seems like it's not just churches getting bigger, but the kingdom expanding. And Jesus, while the disciples had probably more of a, a church growth mentality, like we got to like feed the crowd, feed these people and keep them coming, you know, keep them coming back. Uh, Jesus says, hey, there's these other people that need to hear. We got to go. And so just that reminder for me, uh, I don't know if you feel that way or not, but for me, um, man, we've got, we're about the kingdom, right? Uh, we're to be expanding the kingdom of God. So that's my answer for three. Uh, here's number four. What did the story teach me about the Father, Son, or the Holy Spirit? And uh, this is the part. I, Jesus um, had compassion. Now, it's interesting. I don't know if you caught this. In our NLT version, in verse 41, it says, moved with compassion. And then when you go over to the NIV version, it says Jesus was indignant. Those seem like very different renderings, but there's a little there's a little note here I'm going to pull up. It says many manuscripts say Jesus was filled with compassion. Um, so I think the idea, if you want to harmonize those two thoughts, um, Jesus wasn't indignant with the man. Uh, he was indignant about um, his condition. Um, it, it, as in, as in like, we need to do something about this. This is not okay. Um, he genuinely felt for this man uh, in his condition. He saw, I mean, people with leprosy could lose body parts. Their, their flesh um, could literally rot away. Um, they, they suffered from a lack of sensation, so they often injured themselves. And, and so Jesus saw this man's condition, and however you want to read it, indignant, compassionate, the result is the same. He he noticed, he cared, and he did something. Um, there's a lot of people that think that that Jesus is, uh, they have this idea of Jesus or God maybe about being, you know, vengeful, wrathful, angry, ready to zap somebody. But time and time again, when we study the Gospels, here's Jesus with a man that really shouldn't even be speaking to him by the law of their land. Um, and he stops what he's doing. He reaches out his hand. He touches this man. This man hadn't experienced human touch maybe in like years. And here's Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, reaches his hand out to touch this disease riddled man and healed him. And I think what that tells me about, about our God is he is a God of compassion. He is a God who notices our struggles. He is a God who cares. And then he heals him. Um, Wow. I just, I mean, you, you can't get enough of that, right? That's the, that's the good stuff um, in the scripture. Um, and then I, I just have to say, it's funny to me that like he specifically says, um, don't tell anyone what's happened. And the guy runs off and does exactly that. And it's almost like he just couldn't help but talk about what Jesus had done for his life. And I think that's a good segue into question five. Uh, what do I need to do to obey this passage? Um, I need to be like that guy. Um, I need to be more ready, more excited, um, more enthusiastic about telling people what Jesus has done for me. I mean, what else can I say? That the guy was just excited he spread the news about Jesus and what he'd done for him. And by the way, um, sometimes in church, we talk about giving our testimonies. That's your testimony. Um, who was I before I met Jesus? Uh, what is my life like now that I've met Jesus? In other words, what has Jesus done for you? And you don't have to have a, a, a really long story. You don't have to fill it in with all the graphic details. Just simply, 
I used to be like this, and then I met Jesus, and now I'm like this. That's your testimony. All right. Uh, question six. I kind of make this a qualifier every time we, we do this. Um, it's who could I share this with? And I'm not going to name names. Um, and more generally, I think what's great is to read a passage like this. Um, once you're done reading it, kind of run back through in your mind, read it one more time, perhaps get the story straight in your mind and then go out uh, to your day thinking, um, I'm going to wait or watch, maybe even pray for an opportunity uh, to share what I learned today with someone that I encounter and uh, see if I can bless them with this passage that has blessed me. All right. So um, Discovery Bible Study. Uh, episode four in Mark one. Next time we're going to get into Mark chapter two as we slowly work our way through the book of Mark. Uh, I would encourage you, if you haven't thought of this already, to maybe get a little pad of paper and a pen and write down uh, the text um, that we're reading and then maybe your answers to those questions as you go through. That way you can kind of flip back through and remember the things that you discovered as you studied the scripture. Again, in the show notes, on our YouTube channel, if you want to check out, there's some links to some great study websites. And uh, we'll hope to see you back next time as we get into Mark chapter 2. If you'd like more information about High Plains Christian Church, uh, you can text us at 208-450-5010 or find out more about us online at highplains.cc. See you next time.